Welcome back to Late Night Gamer and my impressions video for this epic gameplay of Eldritch Horror which took its time I must say but that's not uh, surprising in these type of games, these storytelling games. It's supposed to take its time and the story history is supposed to roll out before your eyes. Now the backdrop for me actually doing this in the first place was that I had Arkham Horror and I was sure that that's all the Cthulhu style games I'm going to get. But then I was able to buy Eldritch Horror used and I tried it and there were some mechanics there which I really enjoyed, which I found like almost mind-blowing in terms of gameplay compared to Arkham and the streamlining was really nice. So I thought, yeah, this is a game I would like. So I bought all the expansions, just almost all in one go and haven't tried them individually. So then I had all the expansions and thought, well, why not do an epic gameplay, which I did for Arkham, I can do it for Eldritch. The result of that is kind of a mixed bag, I think. Um, so there are pluses and minuses, and I think for an epic style of gameplay, it's mostly minuses. Let's begin with talking about some of the problems I think this game have from an epic perspective. And disclaimer, of course, it's not meant to be played epic. I do think these game boards really shows the essence of it. Right now there is nothing here in the dreamlands and the end of the game or there are two clues and yeah these are monsters that are supposed to be set aside so they are not in game. There are only two clues and there is this dream quest marker. In Egypt it's the same thing, it's two clues, oh there is a gate and the article board which came out very late as a gate and a monster and that's really it there is no much action going on in the sideboard I never went to Egypt once I just passed through here because of the dream portal and for Antarctica I never was there either so it seems to me that the dream land soaks up a lot of gates because they have of course three dream portals um, that leads to uh, the moon to and on Kadat and to the underworld, like so, and that means that they will get three gates here immediately when the, when the board comes out. Uh, very shortly these three gates will come out, in addition there's a possibility that Ulthar, Dilatlin and Selafis also comes out as gates. So the dream board seems to be pretty involving at start, but once you sort of close these gates here for the dream portal, um, that's really, maybe maybe you can get some clues, but yeah, the activity really dropped, but at least there was activity here, so that's good, I like that. I wish the same was true for the other sideboards, which were just redundant, to be honest. So these are all the cards, and of course there is a lot of variety, um, there are really some good parts with the game, but the encounters are not too many, and I think that's more or less okay, but the other world encounters... So these are all the other world encounters that are in the game and you will cycle through the same set of cards there for every game. Maybe that is going to really put down the variety of it. So that's, well, that's the major drawback. The only thing you would see from the expansions are some random gates popping out and you won't really go there, which just take up space. And the reason of course is that the game is super streamlined, so I mean the ancient one, these guys, sort of determines which board comes out and when the board comes out with the ancient one you are forced to have activities on the sideboard. That is a super cool mechanic. Uh, but from an epic gameplay view, it doesn't work. But from, for a normal, from, from normal gameplay view, it works perfectly. So, uh, just be aware of that. Uh, and because the chance of getting out the Antarctica board or the Egypt board is just there. There is one guy, one ancient one that brings out and each board, and there is in addition one prelude card, so it's not great. So you could do it by random, of course, or you could say that oh, now I really want to play with this in this expansion. It's really up to you. The good thing is, of course, that there's a lot happening here on the main board. Um, 
that is the centerpiece of the game and and, and maybe, I don't know, the streamlining was really what drew me to the game in the first place after being adamant that I shouldn't buy it at all. Then the streamlining really felt like, wow, yeah, this game is really flowing. And although I did some mistakes here, the chance of doing mistakes is much, much less here than in Arkham Horror. Much less. And that's good. That's a good thing. Yeah, so now I'm just cleaning up here with all these tokens. Focus tokens, it's a nice thing. So I won't really go through and, and, and sort of have a review of the game. Um, but uh, let me just clean up and I'll bring out Arkham and we'll do some comparisons. Right, Arkham Horror, Elledge Horror. Just a short look on the cards that comes with the game. So, for Elledge Horror, um, for instance, the location cards. So this is the location for Europe. Three cities are covered here, three locations. And this is the stack for the entire game. Now, please remember, of course, that Arkham Horror has one more expansion than Eldritch Horror um, at the moment. Well, it's equal now, but I haven't gotten the last expansion from Eldritch yet. It's not out yet here in, in my country. But So there are some more cards here. So if you take from Arkham Horror the north side location, which also has three locations, curiosity shop, newspaper and trade station. And compare them, you see that all the location from Europe equals north side in Arkham. And of course in Arkham, in addition on the main board we have downtown, east town, merchant district, Rivertown, Miskatonic, University, French Hill, uptown and south side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight location in total. While Eldritch that have generic encounters, Asia, North and South America, and Europe. And that's it. One, two, three, four. That becomes very clear when you see it from the top. All the location in Arkham with all the expansions. And the same here with Dun with the uh, with Eldritch horror. And here from here on. It's expeditions and there are some locations in Antarctica. But you can see only half the box here is full, half the row, while the entire row here is full. And as I said, my main concern when it comes to replayability is the other world encounters in Eldritch, which only has this many cards and you will cycle through this deck in every game. While uh, Arkham Horror, the gate cards is half the row it's like one two it's four six times almost the number of cards here i think of course the mechanism is a little bit different the gate cards in arkham does not close any gates while well, they do that in eldritch horror the mythos cards mythos cards are the same it's half or over here with mythos cards while it's just a small stack of Mythos cards here for Eldritch. Having said that though, I really like the way that the Mythos cards works in Eldritch compared to Arkham. You build your Mythos decks, deck at the start of the game and that acts as, as a timer. Uh, I th and I find that uh, quite neat. And since I really is not using many Mythos cards at all, in a game, I have no concern when it comes to replayability here in, uh, in Mythos cards. I find out, uh, well, I find that the other small cards are about the same when it comes to uh, the same sort of category, number of spells, number of allies, unique assets or items as they are called in, uh, in Arkham. They're about the same. The skills in, in Arkham works much like the talents, I guess, in um, in Eldritch. So, again, there, um, it's it's fine. I, I have no concern. It's really the other world encounter deck that concerns me a bit. So, what do I prefer? I don't know. I think the streamlining of Eldritch Horror, particularly the way the asset deck works, where you're sort of shopping for items, you can do that from any city and there's a display that's very good 
it's not so good in Arkham. I find it's much I find it much more difficult to get items, useful items in Arkham Horror. Um, yeah, I really like the way that the Ancient One works in Eldritch, where you have a specific theme and research encounters that are tied to the Ancient One. That is very thematic. It floats a bit more in Arkham Horror. Um, I feel that Arkham Horror is a little bit more, it feels more compact and maybe more exciting because you are traveling just the city and the villages around it. While Eldritch is much more wide open. That's like a taste thing, it's not thing is either better or worse than the other in that sense. For a new player, depending on what type of player you are, I guess, if you are used to complex games, I would still prefer, think I would recommend Eldritch because of the streamlining. I think the clue tokens are more important in Arkham than they are in Eldritch because you use clue token to close gates, so it's more like a clue hunting trip. While in Eldritch it depends really on the ancient one. Like in the game that just played, we didn't really hunt for clues because what we had to do it was not gather clues to solve the mysteries, but we have to kill monsters uh, and stuff like that. So that is also different. Different um, uh, sort of taste of different of the two games. If you're not afraid of convoluted games, fiddly games, uh, and the game with the best replay or variability or replayability, go for Arkham. If not, go for Eldritch. Maybe it is as simple as that. Or do as I do, have both. Thank you for watching and thank you for watching the gameplay or the playthrough. And if you have, if you haven't, it's fully understandable. It was a long journey, long trip. But fun as always. And with that, I'm going to sign off now from the Late Night Gamer. And I hope to see you back again in another video with another game. Bye bye. <laughs>